asked by Professor Marciniak to record in nature. I have come, despite the hurricane, to the Piedmont and wanted to start with the Phoebe's nest. The Phoebe's made their nest here. And my daughter Sarah, who has never probably had a chance to do it before, buried a dead bird, a dead Phoebe which had fallen out of the nest and died. Um, why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because the idea of a dead bird is at the center of my inquiry into what A.B. Warburg called pathos formal. Um, by pathos formal, he meant a certain kind of effective Hello. I hope that this version of my presentation doesn't seem too backward technologically. Uh, I will be talking about a dead bird and the cenotaph, echoes of antiquity in Janusz Korczak's King Met on the Desert Island, 1923, and Margaret Wise Brown's The Dead Bird, which was written and published um, in 1938, but it didn't have its picture book edition until 1950s, until the 1950s. So beginning with um, Janusz Korczak's second volume on King Matt, um, this is King Matt on the desert island, there are all the motifs that um, I think are obviously very familiar to any student of children's literature, um, such as King Matt being an orphan, um, and also to students of antiquity, because King Matt is an exile at this point on a desert island. And what interests me is that his favorite bird, the canary, dies and Maciuś, King Matt, chooses to bury the bird, give him a funeral the way that uh, children are prone to do. And then next to um, that little grave, the tomb of the bird, he erects a cenotaph for his parents and also for Campanella, who's a queen that has rec recently died. So, um, from the dead bird, we move on to something much more um, human, closer to Maciuś's heart, um, that is his parents' graves. And in the Margaret uh, Wise Brown book, illustri illustrated already after the author's um, death, illustrated uh, by Remy Charlib, um, the story is very simple. The children find a dead bird. The first line of the book is the bird um, was dead when the children found it. Um, and the children proceed very ceremoniously to bury the bird. They put ferns and flowers, various, so to speak, grave goods on the grave. They sing to the bird. They bring fresh flowers every day until they forget about it until they forget about it. Um, well, the image of the cenotaph uh, goes back to antiquity as well. To give um, perhaps a f helpful little visual um, outline of what, um, what the connections are, I would just like to walk you through this. So we have A.B. Warburg's idea of pathos formal, uh, Warburg being the art historian who uh, of the Hamburg um, School of Art History, who was interested in antiquity, studied um, 
both uh, Greece and Rome, but was uh, uh, really in love with Florence and with the Renaissance. Um, so his death of Orpheus as emblematic pathos formal, for form of pathos, which he takes from Ovid. So he's interested in images. Nonetheless, he considers the death of, of Orpheus as described by Ovid as a sort of linguistic gesture, emotive gesture in language. And then he takes it um, to Dürer and Mantegna, so to the Renaissance, to the European Renaissance. Uh, while for me in this particular presentation and, and in the paper, the dead bird is this kind of formal um, encapsulation of pathos, both for Janusz Korczak and for Margaret Weiss Brown. Um, the dead bird, which then ritually is buried in a grave. And finally, the ultimate uh, connection to antiquity is the empty grave, the cenotaph, which even though it is empty, it's a formal space that paradoxically contains the memory of suffering. And um, I just want to add that it is really the genius of those two children's authors in particular, very, very famous, uh, well-read, um, almost canonical children's authors. Um, so it's a tribute to their genius that they, um, that they take up this anthropologically, I guess, um, very, very primal form of um, burying the dead bird. And then Korczak takes it all the way to, um, to a kind of um, metaphysical value of an empty, empty grave. There really isn't enough time in this presentation to go into um, the idea of pathos for men, but I wanted to show at least briefly how Warburg um, justifies it, where, where he sort of takes the idea from antiquity and weaves it all the way to modernity via um, the Renaissance. So the example I would like to use, he, he has many, but one of the most striking ones and appropriate for us is the example of um, death of Orpheus. And he uses, interestingly enough, Albrecht Dürer's sketch drawing from 1494. And then he also uses Andrea Mantegna's 15th century engraving um, by the same name, Death of Orpheus. And he says that what interests him is the re-entry of the ancient world into modern civilization. Um, in its style, it is directly informed, he says, by the emotive gestural language defined by Greece for the same tragic scene. So Greece defined it, Dürer and Mantegna pick it up. And um, I quote Warburg again, these works supply almost identical proofs of the vigor with which this archaeologically authentic emotive formula, the pathos formal, based on an antique Orpheus or pen Pentos has taken root in Renaissance artistic circles. Another important point concerning the cenotaph, um, which etymologically is an empty grave and has a long tradition, although none of the ones from antiquity survived, I think, they physically, they, they survived in literature. So the empty grave is um, a kind of paradox, right? because it's a material object which houses something immaterial. It houses memory, and yet it is not a monument, right? It's different. A monument to, I don't know, uh, Baudelaire is very different from Baudelaire's cenotaph. Baudelaire's cenotaph is actually at the cemetery uh, in Montparnasse. So, um, 
the concept of pathos formal, um, according to Giorgio Agamben, whom uh, Didi Uberman quotes, um, a concept like the pathos formal makes it impossible to separate form from content, for it expresses the indissoluble intrication of an emotive charge and an iconographic formula. So this is what, what interests me in particular here. Um, the emotive charge of a cenotaph, which is very, very high, and the formula, which is um, stone, more often than not, or some kind of enclosed um, shape, tangible material, um, and iconographic by, by um, definition. To recapitulate, I would like to um, state the main um, sort of currents that run through my reading of Janusz Korczak's particular scene, the staging of the um, dead bird's funeral, which then leads to the erection of the cenotaphs of his parents and of Campanella, and then the simple picture book, um, somewhat misleadingly simple, uh, by Margaret Wise Brown, uh, from about 10 years later, so exactly before the <clears throat> outbreak of World War II. So the central idea to me is that of A.B. Warburg's pathos formal, which is um, a formulation of pathos, of suffering, that Warburg sees as, a, as an echo, a kind of survival of an idea from antiquity. Nachleben, he calls it, the survival. So it's a very, very subtle um, thing that both Korczak and Wise uh, do um, because nowhere does the word antiquity appear. But in the ancient ritual of burial and then an, a much more metaphysical ritual of building a cenotaph, therefore an empty grave, um, that's where, where I see this line, this line of, um, of antiquity making it to our time um, through empathy, through a certain um, consideration of empathy and um, gestural language. And I think it's only appropriate to um, end the presentation with a cenotaph found in the Jewish um, cemetery in Warsaw on Okopowa Street to Janusz Korczak himself and um, the children that died with him. Mm. So nature, uh, in the form of the dead bird, offers a vehicle to both the um, to both the modern writers and modern readers. And it is through this vehicle of nature that the notion of um, death conceived in the, in the kind of context of um, suffering, which actually is very difficult to express. I think that's why Margaret Wise Brown uses empty pages um, in her book, well, I should say rather that her editors um, choose to skip illustrations. So the edition of The Dead Bird comes out in 1958 without um, pictures on every page. There are pictures and then there is a picture that is missing 